Hello, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, I'm presenting today uh, the topic of cybersecurity, cyber attacks, and the changing infrastructure. So I'll start by defining the cybersecurity challenge. And the challenge, uh, which is visible to virtually anybody associated with, uh, with the digital world, is that cyber attacks are increasing in numbers and sophistication. The attack surface itself is also increasing with the digital transformation explosion. And cybersecurity is now requiring end-to-end -end solutions. And I will cover the topic of uh, compliance, risk discovery and analysis, product development hygiene, to an unstoppable avalanche of vulnerabilities in layers of cyber defense, and what's required as you go forward, which is software, in runtime requiring cyber protection as the last line of defense. And I'll go through each one of the main items uh, as you will see shortly. The scope impact and number of cyber attacks uh, became very visible when the solar winds attack followed by the colonial pipeline attack got the attention of the entire government on what was happening. And uh, solar winds and colonial pipeline executives were brought before the Congress also to explain how it happened, why it happened, why there was no protection in order to stop such attacks. And I'll address many of those things as we go through this presentation. There were many other attacks that had major economic and security related impact. And ransomware, those cases came on with the real vengeance around the world. So Acer, which is a Taiwanese company, very large company, JBS Foods, Kia Motors, CNA Insurance in the US, Brentag, Quanta, all of these and others suffered major cyber uh, ransomware attacks and had to pay massive amount of ransomware uh, in order to basically settle these cases. And many didn't even declare that they had been damaged by cybersecurity attacks uh, and demanded and uh, and that the hackers had demanded ransom in order to release their 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 code and their data which had been uh, encrypted and out of their reach resulting in significant business interruptions and the full value of the business interruption damage is also not assessed but it is projected that uh, such damage is expected to reach 265 billion by 2031. And this is a cybersecurity ventures report. If you take a look at Bitcoin transactions that have been tied to ransomware payments, the US Treasury has been monitoring up to 5.2 billion. I myself am on a board of companies which have been suffering from such ransomware attacks and they have not made it public. So there's a lot of information that's not even public where the damage is, uh, is relatively hidden. Critical infrastructure, which is the lifeblood of any nation today, and supply chains, the security weaknesses have been targeted by hackers. The number of data breaches in 2021 last year soared past that of 2020. And we have significant exposure of cyber warfare at sea. And the question is, is our Navy safe? There have been incidents both of loss of power and an accident, where the questions were asked if it was related to cyber attacks. Then there was a, a complete power outage in parts of India. And uh, there was a question asked whether China was behind those October's power outage attacks from last year, because that was about the time when there was a lot of, uh, lot of tension between India and China on their borders. If you take a look at the percentage of organizations that have been compromised by success, successful cyber attacks from 2014 to 2021, the list is 86.2%. In reality, there are others who say that this is only those that have admitted to a successful cyber attack. And there, there may be as many as every single one of the organizations that have actually suffered a cyber attack, but they have not admitted to it. If you then take a look at the weekly attacks per organization in 2021 and the increase in those weekly attacks relative to the prior year, 
you can see education and research and research applies everywhere. This is the most sensitive areas, whether it's in corporations or it's in the educational sphere. The number of cyber attacks have gone up 75%. Government and military, it's gone up 47%. Communications, 51%. ISP, MSP, 67%. Healthcare, 71%. On and on and on across board. And you can also see software vendors directly coming under attack to the tune of 146%. I mean, this is an eye chart of the biggest data breaches. But the thing to watch is the number of records that have been lost. 17.2 billion records have been lost. Where have they been lost from? From the web, which includes applications and data loss. 9.9 .9 billion records lost, finance and tech between these three or four, including government, that's the bulk of where uh, the, the, the records have been lost. And whether they've been lost to nation states or, or cyber criminals, either case is extremely damaging to the entire industry and worldwide. Cyber attacks are projected to increase. The question is, the CIO CISO response, is it adequate? I can only give a subjective uh, assessment that it is not adequate. There is still a degree of complacency that I find in the CIO CISO community, at least percentage of the CIO CISO community. Now, I move to defining the cybersecurity challenge in terms of the attack surface that is increasing with digital transformation explosion. The infrastructure is changing very rapidly and that's creating weaknesses. Server workloads is where most of the digital wealth or digital content resides. And whether it's on-prem, whether it's virtual machines, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's in containerized environment and containerization of on-prem also is occurring, or whether it's in SCADA, the control of control systems and, and information processing and control systems in, in the critical infrastructure. There's an explosion of applications coming on from all directions, and there is simultaneously an increase in the attack types. So this has dramatically increased the attack surface. And this changing infrastructure is, is related to, again, a greater exposure and therefore a greater number of attacks that are occurring. If you now take a look at the digital attack surface growth, the global attack surface is growing by the minute. Over 117,000 hosts are created each minute, 613 domains are created each minute, and 375 new threats are exposed each minute. Then there is a growth of a tsunami of vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities over here are the ones that are reported, not those that have been multiplied and fanning out in being incorporated in the software uh, development, which itself is accelerating very rapidly. Software development in some corporations has gone up 2x, and in 17% of the, of, the, of, the, of the industry, it's gone up by almost 10x. The global attack surface is part of an organization's attack surface. And if you take a look at the new pieces of malware that are detected every day, every day it's over 560,000. And the variants, 74% increase. Now let's move to the cybersecurity requirements end to end. That includes compliance and risk discovery, hygiene for product development, is patching enough, an unstoppable avalanche of vulnerabilities which we just shared, and the layers of cyber defense that are being put in place. And finally, the last line which remains exposed, which is software runtime. And I'll talk about it shortly. The question is, are corporations and government bodies cyber ready? Because cyber risk is growing exponentially. Pricewaterhouse assessment of cyber readiness shows, which I think is very optimistic, 
that 37% of organizations are moving and are ahead of the required improvements required in their cyber posture. 37% are just keeping pace. 26% are behind what is required. And this is the minimum requirement, I think, that, uh, that uh, Pricewaterhouse has assessed. The risk assessment of digital infrastructure, that itself is very important because companies like CyberSaint are providing risk analysis automation. And that is extremely critically important because a large number of corporations in their entire vast spread don't even know where the risk resides within their digital infrastructure. The first line of defense is aligning that risk mitigation with compliance and discovering where the risk resides, even at a high level of uh, abstraction. There is an increase in software agility that I talked about where uh, software development is constantly accelerating with the new tools and the use of uh, third-party tools and third-party software. And patching cannot keep up as newer and newer vulnerabilities keep coming. And I showed you that uh, 2021, there were almost 20,000 new vulnerabilities that had been discovered. And those 20,000 take a while before they actually get patched. And cyber attacks are not coming from nation states and sophisticated criminals that are as sophisticated as nation states. And one of the areas which I'll talk about is remote code execution attacks that escape existing cyber defenses. And, and I'll give you sort of a verbal description of what remote code execution means. Remote code execution is, is a disguised attack from nation states and sophisticated criminals. This, this, is a, this is the ideal surface that they like to attack on. And the reason is it is not visible to existing cybersecurity products. And the reason it's not visible to the existing cybersecurity products is that the cybersecurity existing products depend upon their defenses based on their experience and knowledge and what they have trained on, which is prior attacks. Now, when remote code execution attack occurs, it normally comes in the form of data. So data is benign. So the attack looks completely benign until it actually manifests itself as code because that data is hiding code and code is the instructions that enable an application to execute. And when that happens, that happens just before execution occurs in the server. So it happens in the memory where finally this attack manifests itself. <coughs> so, does software development hygiene, is it required? Very much so. Is patching enough? It is enough for what vulnerabilities are known and patches are available. And that's very important that software development is required to ensure vulnerabilities are patched and it is continuous. But here is the issue. The issue is that 58% of known vulnerabilities have no patches available at the time the vulnerabilities are dis discovered and declared. That's a report from Mandiant. Unknown vulnerabilities are discovered continuously. So when a discovery of a vulnerability occurs, it is very likely that the vulnerability had existed prior to that. This is what is called zero day. So zero day does not have a defense. It does not have a patch opportunity. And this represents the exposure to what I described a little earlier as a remote execution cyber attack. Microsoft said that vulnerabilities are exploited within five minutes of being discovered by hackers. So vulnerability is declared within five minutes. And there is no patch available within five minutes of a vulnerability being uh, discovered and declared. So this is where I introduce uh, a company where I am the executive chair, which is uh, Versec. And I give it uh, as an example with a quote coming from Broadcom. 
Now, Broadcom basically acquired Symantec and Symantec was, uh, before the acquisition, the largest pure play cybersecurity company in the world. And they have a huge plethora of cyber tools. Despite that, Broadcom clearly understood that none of those cyber protection tools protected them against zero day attacks. And this is uh, a quote from a principal for cybersecurity at Broadcom, which he says that when we deployed the Versic platform, we experienced an immediate ROI and a clear view into our entire application attack surface. Now we have visibility and control over how our application code executes during runtime. And during runtime means just before it starts running in the server's processor and identifies malicious behavior. This awareness is especially true for zero day attacks, which Versac can detect without any prior knowledge. And apparently within the first week of them deploying us, we were able to protect them against a nation state attack. Now, solar winds attack, as I said earlier, was a seminal moment for the nation. Even today, there is a, there is a declaration of a need for um, greater cybersecurity protection coming from White House, which is repeating what NSA has said, that we need memory level protection. That's where remote code execution executes. We need runtime protection because that's where actually the software starts running in the processor. And we need deterministic protection, which means that if it is probabilistic and looking at the past, even if it is using the benefit of machine learning, it is insufficient. And the attacks that are coming now are from tens of thousands of incidents, Kevin Mandia, CEO of FireEye said. And, and this, this kind of attack has to be stopped only in the main memory, before the execution occurs. What does Gartner think about it? So this is basically a Gartner chart. And you can see that they have focused on the operations hygiene, which is arbitrary code, no email, web client, privilege management, change management, log management, all the things that protect against a user scarenessness or software not being taken through proper hygiene. Hardening, configuration, vulnerability management, all that is essential, but insufficient. Because there are three areas which remain exposed. Network firewall, there are very good network firewalls that are available, but system integrity assurance, application control, and memory protection, exploit prevention. This is where Versac comes in. So as I said earlier, the attackers when they actually enter with even remote code execution or something that is disguised, they're looking for vulnerabilities to exploit. So hardening, vulnerability scanning, monitoring process, network files and system calls from outside have proven not to be enough. What do cloud vendors do about this situation? They're aware of the fact that they're exposed. So they take a very simple position. They call it shared security. They are not taking responsibility for securing the customer's applications and data. They're saying they're only assuring that they will hold their infrastructure secure as far as applications and content and data is concerned. That's the responsibility of the people using the cloud. Now, this will come under compliance issues later on, but in Europe, it's already being declared as a major compliance hole. Cyber attacks hide code as data, as I said, which acts as runtime to encrypt and exfiltrate. This is what I described to you earlier, which we call remote code execution cyber attack. This is very hard to prevent because conventional cybersecurity solutions also lack the visibility when execution starts in memory. They treat application execution as a black box that they don't have visibility into. And the response time to attacks is far too slow. There is a large amount of latency between detection and protection so that the wall of protection that is erected with existing cybersecurity products is failing. 
legacy cyber security just does not have visibility into the application execution yet 70000 of 70% of the attacks target server workloads 97% of apps have at least one top 10 vulnerability and memory buffer errors top 25 most dangerous they are number one in that category this is where Versec comes in because it provides deep visibility and application aware awareness across all enterprise workloads whether it's in virtual machines and the cloud whether it's custom code whether it's running on-prem whether it's running in containerized environment or any other so it delivers a complete workload protection from detection to protection. The time is instantaneous because if there is a gap in the time between detection of a cyber attack to instantiating protection, that gap is open window for a cyber attacker to take advantage of. And the problem, as I have highlighted earlier, is that network and endpoint tools have narrow visibility outside the workload. The real problem is in the workload execution, and that's the only place where Versec exercises its control, its detection and instantaneous protection after the det detection has occurred. In its capabilities, Versec has three areas, core, advanced, and premium. It assures system integrity, application control, memory protection, exploit protection, pre and prevention, and finally, web protection, which means web applications, which is the bulk of the application that are running, they are also protected. And they're protected extremely rapidly in milliseconds, not giving any time for any attacker to take advantage of that hole between detect and protect. So I already gave you a testimonial from Broadcom, which described it. So that was the first example of a customer use case that was very important. We protected the public facing apps that can expose sensitive data, including the intellectual property. It secures all layers, including web memory and host. Legacy workload protection. This is where actually people have stopped patching even and patches are not even available. So we, <coughs> with our product enable virtual patching, and prevent the vulnerability exploits to be uh, to be taken advantage of by hackers. And we modernize the security for aging applications or platforms despite vulnerabilities being there. Critical infrastructure workloads protect SCADA systems from advanced attacks and ensure continuous integrity of application code and hosts. And for each one of them, we are basically deployed in the Department of Homeland Security and we are deployed in water companies. What are the benefits finally? We dramatically improve the, uh, the cybersecurity coverage. We eliminate uh, blind spots and exposure to advanced attacks. We detect and protect instantly without prior knowledge and in the presence of existing zero-day vulnerabilities, we produce precise results and reduce analysis time. And because we are deterministic, we do not generate false positives. Very few false positives may occur, but they're on account of uh, you know, entropy within the environment. But you know the, the host of false positives that quite frequently drown the analysis teams is not so with Versec. And finally, it makes life easier because once you deploy it, there is no learning, no tuning, no signatures, no policy updates required. We automatically map and enforce correct execution of software. And that brings me to the end. I thank you very much. And if there are any question and answer sessions, uh, I'm open to it. If there isn't, then I thank you very much.
and appreciate uh, participating in this conference.